All right, guys. So welcome to our TNCBA post-tournament show. This is something new that we're going to be doing. Kelsey's going to be helping me out with this. He's going to be my, my co-host here. Just so happens that he he smoked all of us this past weekend in, in our first tournament of the year. So we're going to get a firsthand account of what actually went down. But I want to start out talking about the, the weather. Um, leading up to this event, things had been, I don't want to say – mild by any means but weather had been somewhat stable and then the closer we got um, probably about a week out weather started getting really bad the forecast was horrible they were calling for like lows in the low teens around 10 degrees a high of like 24 25 in my mind I'm thinking we're done like we're going to cancel this thing for sure uh, but as we got into the next week things started to pick up things were getting better and better and eventually that that high climbed up into the the upper 40s. Um, I think it was a lie, though, Kelsey. I don't think it ever got anywhere near that 47, 48 no. degrees that they said. Like, I was no, cold. It, it couldn't have been more than 42 at the best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Guess. Yeah, no, it was terrible. But luckily, it wasn't below freezing when we put in this mo that morning. Um, so we started out with about 33, 34 degrees uh, air temperature. Warmed up probably about 42, but it was a constant drizzle all day long. Never rained really hard, oh, yeah. but man, it was just it was that annoying rain that you couldn't take your hood off, yeah. you couldn't get rid of anything, you had to keep wearing your gear, and if everything wind, was soaking wet. Yeah. It once the wind would die down a little bit, it would you'd warm up and then it would just pick back up again. So it was like, it was, it was a miserable day as far as, oh, yeah. as climate goes. Oh yeah, definitely. And of course for both of us and, and Snyder, which you'll see some video on here of, of the Snyder brothers as well, but pretty much we're all near the main lake. So we weren't hiding from the wind. It was coming from every direction. Um, oh, yeah. But as the results show, Kelsey and his dad had 17 pounds, even a killer bag. Um, up there on Holston, and like I said in the little article I put on Facebook, nearly lapped the field. You almost doubled the weight of everybody, dude. That was pretty awesome. So, uh, good day. Oh, very good day. But I'm going to go ahead and let you just kind of run through a summary of, of how your day went from takeoff to getting back to black, uh, back to weigh-in, bud. All right. So what we did, really, we, uh, we fished a spot that we normally fish a lot of times when we go to South Holston, and um, – Got a lot of good history on that point or in that area anyways. But um, what we started off doing is um, I was, I started out with a Kai tech and really didn't have any results. And uh, dad was throwing a, uh, what I, what we call an ugly head fly. And what we we're doing was tight lining with it on a 45 degree angle banks. And uh, what we would do is, I mean, it's just a small little jig and you just throw it out there and, just shake your pole just as little as you could and just reel as slow as you could maybe making a full turn every five to 10 seconds, really just working it as slow as you could. And then if you felt like you were coming, coming through the water column, you I'd let it, I would let it drop and let it go back down to the bottom because sometimes you, you just feel it. It's not touching the bottom and you want to keep it against the bottom. Okay. So you were looking for a little bit of bottom contact. Oh yes, yes. Okay. And, um, okay. And I'll be honest with you, just some of those bites, like a couple times, Dad and I both. We uh, one time he set the pole down actually and was working on something and picked it back up, and a fish had it. So it's like just one of those type deals. And I had a similar instance where I uh, I turned around and I was talking to him and I was just standing there with my pole just dead stick on the bottom and I pick up and sure enough I had I had a fish on so the real pattern I really noticed with it was now there were some on the on the walls but most of our fish come off of the points so these wind blown points where the wind was blowing into it or a point like where the wind was blowing at it but it, you had a little like an eddy, eddy yeah. right there yeah and um like I said, we were just throwing it and working it as slow as we could. And we caught our fish anywhere from, I would say, 10 to 15 feet. It, it, and, and I mean, some of those other ones may have come deeper. The ones that we were just sitting there and it was dead stick and straight on the bottom. Those were probably about 20 to 25. Okay. At but most at our deepest, but the majority of our fish come from about 10 to 15 feet deep. And, um, Dad started out throwing one, the, the fly that I'm talking about. So this is what it is. It's a little, 
little ugly head jig. It's got a little duck feather and he was actually throwing a pink. Okay. And um, he, he actually said, Hey, how many fish am I going to have to catch on this before <laughs> you pick it up? And I said, two, <laughs> I, said, I said, two. And uh, sure enough, he caught one. It was a non keeper. We work our way down the bank. He, he picks up our first keeper with it. So I'm like, okay, give me the other one. We're, we pick it up and we start throwing down the bank and we work, we work our way down to our next point. And I hook into what was our biggest fish of the day, which was a 479 smallmouth. And, um, and ended up actually being big fish for the tournament too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now tell me but, this much as you're going down the bank, are we talking, so like me and you've talked a lot about like in April, you're making casts like every so many inches oh, yeah. it feels like so were you all creeping oh, yeah. down that bank like that oh yeah especially with the water temperatures that we were seeing you know you're seeing our water temperature was 43.1 degrees yeah. that was that was the consistent water temperature that i've seen all day so 43 degrees and um this technique really it shines in anywhere between the high to low 40s and it's just a very subtle bait and i mean like I said, this little thing catches big fish. Oh yeah. But um, and I mean, like I said, we've got history with it. Dad caught one a few years ago that was over almost seven. Yeah, on, I remember that. He same. had six a six pounder. Yeah, and it was so. Um, one thing that we realized that um, I, I tend to got I, I got more bites than Dad was when he was throwing the pink, and I really think with that cloud cover we had the rain the yeah. the water the water where we were at was very clear was fairly clear but i mean there was still a little bit of color to it so i really think that chartreuse um really stood out a little more and that okay. that was what got me more bites now most of these bites you said like i think me and you talked or something on the water about 11 o'clock i think it was maybe yeah, y'all already had four at that point. So yeah, was this about, a, a fairly early flurry that you had here? Um, well, I'll say this: we pulled up to our spot, and uh, we probably made about ten casts, and Dad hooked into the first non-keeper. Okay, and then probably about thirty minutes later, he caught our first keeper. So somewhere around eight fifteen to eight thirty, we had what we had our first fish, okay. and then um, probably around nine is when we uh when we hooked in when i hooked into the bigger one and then it like i said that fish was actually fairly shallow i want to say that was on the higher end closer to 10 feet because i threw up really close to the bank and um didn't make too many too many cranks of the, the reel and it was it was on okay and then um worked our way around that point just a little ways more and i caught our second keeper so, um, and the one thing I will say is like the nice thing about that fly, and we've talked about this before, but it's, it's that kryptonite to the Domeki. Like oh, yeah. instead of you having to get out there and, and play that video game, sit there and stare at your graphs all day, especially with what most of us do, having limited amount of time on the water. We don't have, we don't know where these bait balls are. We don't yeah. know where these active fish are. So if you don't have that time, still being able to hit the bank with that fly, with it, whether it's that ugly head or it's the crawfish fly, like the Snyder boys like to throw, it's oh, yeah. that kryptonite to the Namiki. So how'd the, how'd the afternoon go when you were uh, kind of picking up some late day fish? Because you had four, and yeah. then you told me later on that you actually culled up a little bit. So tell me about those yeah. fish. So we had, we had four fish. Uh, we probably had our four fish at probably about 1030 or so, and we just could constantly went back and forth on this one stretch of water and um so we work our way back to where we started and um get get to there and um, we finally pick up our fifth fish probably about eleven thirty. okay and with with the conditions were the way they were we were <laughs> we were really debating on going back to the truck then everybody but, was um, but um we were able to catch another that was our fifth fish. And then it, it, we, we hit a little bit of a lull and from about 1130 till about 130, 130, 140. So it did slow down a little bit for us. But like I said, when you find one, 
you'd normally find another one because um, there was one spot we were fishing. And now this was off of the point, but it was still a, it was a cut in the bank yeah. in the lake. There's a point over here. And then our other points way over here, but it's like a funnel. Right. So, you know, the fish are the, whatever bait fish is going, getting blown in there, whatever. So it's like a, it's a little holding area Definitely. for them. And uh, I know dad said he got a bite and was, he got bit multiple times in one spot. So then finally I get in there and throw that, that jig in there and catch one. And then we work just a little ways down the bank and I catch another one. So it seemed like if you catch one, you're going to catch another one. And I like that you made that point. Cause again, we always hear the talk about in the winter time, they group up. And mm -hmm. if you can find some fish in the wintertime and, and for us with our small mouth on Holston, that's true too, but they're often out chasing bait. They're oh, grouped yeah. up and stuff, but they're out there, pelagic, they're, 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 they're moving around chasing that bait, but it's still true for as well. If you find them on the bank, you find them on these certain points, they're going to group up in these wintertime holes. And if there's one, there's typically more. That's why, I usually struggle this time of year so much because I want to just keep going. I want to oh, keep yeah. moving and moving and moving and moving. And, and you all have that expertise, that specialty of, of being able to slow yourself down and just work an area thoroughly. And it, and it shows because you all have, this is not a fluke. Y'all have done well in, in these early season tournaments on a regular basis. And especially when we're up there on Holston. So I'll let you continue about the, the last couple of calls. Just, well, just to go back to what you were saying, it's uh, one thing that dad and I both have always done is like, if we catch one in an area, it, well, no matter what time of year it is, we'll, we'll work that area pretty thorough because normally there's another one with it. Right. So it's like, we do tend to do that a lot, but I mean, it's, it's, it's good sometimes and it's bad sometimes it, it's, 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 it's worked out in our favor and, and it's hard to <laughs> all at the same time yeah but um the last two we caught um like i said it was pretty cold we were working our way up through the bank and dad said well we got five why don't we go to the truck and warm up and i was like well let's work our way to a point this point over here and if we don't catch nothing we'll go so we and he's thinking well we won't be able to call up or nothing like that so what we do is we ended up getting to that point and i hook into one it's and it was bigger than ones we had so i'm sitting back there working on them checking the weights weighing on my fish and we had two that were 181 and 182 so and just a little plug in for the connect scales thank those thanks those guys a lot oh, yeah definitely for for hooking us up with those uh, i wouldn't know what to do without them because i mean it really helps in those type of situations but um no, we, we got back there. I'm sitting back there working on my fish, trying to figure out which ones are the small ones, putting cold tags on them, everything else. And then while I'm doing that, I've got one fish out on the deck and one on the scale. And I look back and dad's got one hooked. So <laughs> but that's a good problem so, I mean, to have. So, I mean, like I said, they were, they were all, you catch one, you're going to catch another one. Yeah. And so we were able to call up and I think our smallest fish was like 262 at that time yeah. after we called it, called both of those ones that were very close to each other. So, I mean, don't give up. Like if you're, if you're going to quit, make sure you have a goal point of where you're going to get before you do that anyways, because it's like, like I can only say is never give up, you know, cause. I but, mean, but I will say this, you all were probably warmer than anybody else all day with that action that you had going on. Oh yeah. I'll tell you what, I mean, if you look at the results, we had you all with five, you had Van Dyke with four, the Van Dyke uh, father-son duo, and then you had Justin and Hank with four. Nobody else. Well, I take that back. Snyder's had three, but they were three smaller fish. But two and three keepers or less was the, the main thing. Oh, and yeah. half the people zeroed. I think we had yeah. only 10 boats way in. So, I mean, it was an exceptionally tough day. So that was that was super tough. But what I do want to do really quick, but I want to look at this quick video here of um, the Snyder Brothers fishing. Uh, this will be a good look for uh, for that fly. All right now, one thing you're going to see here with with Cody Snyder is he's fishing this fly. Um, he's going to be shaking it, and again, it's a very very limber rod, a medium action rod that he uses. Uh -huh. 
And even though he, he looks like he's shaking it a ton, that, that fly is probably not moving as much as you think it is. No. But he's constantly keeping that reel moving. You can see by his hand, he's kind of lifting it a little bit to keep that up off the bottom. And he sets the hook here into one. And Kelsey will probably tell you the exact same thing, though. Whenever you catch one, it, it usually feels like you're on a stick. Oh, it yeah. It just kind of gets heavy. Um, but that fly is a, a super killer bait in the wintertime when that water temperature is anywhere in the 40s um for these small mouth and every once in a while you'll run into a large mouth but it's predominantly going to be um, a small mouth bait that you're going to see and i know that you have like i said you all have fished the fly a lot you all typically tend to lean towards that duck feather and more of a shad imitator a little bit more um, oh, yeah. whereas well, not those that crawfish fly a lot and it's it's i think the crawfish fly is better near that 48 because those crawfish mm -hmm. start to hibernate a little bit once it gets colder than that. So oh, I think yeah. that 48 to 50 degree range is where that crawfish fly, but that duck feather fly there that y'all had was a shad imitator. And those of you that were out on the water, if you notice though, there was shad this big. And I don't know if it was going on down where you all were at, but in the middle part of the lake where me and dad were fishing, there were shad that big dying everywhere. So there was a ma major shad kill going on and that fly just, trickling down that water column and just jumping up just a little bit because if those fish were kind of floating or those shad were floating towards the top if you reach down and just barely touched them with um with a rod tip they'd kind of quiver for a second and then they quit again so that fly is that perfect perfect imitator oh, yeah. uh, of that shad kill that was going on um but let's talk a little bit about some of the other guys so the van dyke boys okay father son duo what do they love to do kelsey they love to throw a crankbait. That but man would throw a crankbait, him and Emma throw a crankbait, no matter what the water temperature is or oh, whatever, yes. and it, they make it work. And they're the truest form of fish your strengths, fish what you got confidence in. Exactly. Uh, and you had the chance to talk to them a little bit about kind of the depth range they were focusing in on. So what did they, yeah. they say to you? They were throwing a crankbait in about 10 to 15 foot of water and, and basically the same kind of banks we were working, you know, 45 degree angle banks and uh, just – working their way down the banks and picking up fish here and there. Okay. And, uh, the, and they had pretty decent fish. Their fish. I mean, I would say their smallest fish was about 16 inches or so. Yeah. And they had, uh, because they had four for a little at nine thirty nine. Um, yes. So they had a solid bag coming in second. Did they talk to you about, did they catch any short fish? Um, I want to say they may have. Okay. Um, well, see, I, I did not, did, yeah. me and dad did not catch any short fish. I know the, the Snyder brothers caught a few short fish. You all said you had a couple shorts. Um, of course, me and dad only had the two, but we did not have any short fish. It was just those two keepers that we caught, and that was it. Um, but they definitely made that crankbait work. And like you said, 43-degree water temperatures. Uh, but one thing I think is probably key uh, is I feel like they stayed up in that stained water. Um, because I believe again, they stayed up there, yeah. Washington County ramp, that area was, was much, had a lot more color. It was funny. You could, the bluffs up that way um, had a lot more stain to them. And as soon as we got around to Obnob, it started to clear up a lot. And then, of course, you said it was, was clear yeah. down towards it was, it was uh, your way. Extreme. So, I mean, I think that makes a big difference with that crankbait bite. If you're going to go that route, those fish are going to be a little bit shallower. I'll say that about our fish. Um, you were talking about maybe 10 to 15, 25 at the deepest, um, mine and dad's fish on that green fly in that dirtier water was 10 or less. Okay. And, and I think that made the big difference for us was that stained water there. Um, but that was, that was, that was our key for that. So we have you all in first on the duck feather fly, kind of imitating a shad kill. Then we go to the Van Dykes who have a strong start to the season. They're throwing a crankbait in 10 to 15 foot of water. And then our newcomers, Justin and Hank, um, they put together some late day heroics uh, and they focus on the Demiki and they're dropping on fish and, and they're chasing them around on the pan optics. And, and that's another thing, get, getting away from the need for all that technology. You know, it's a debate constantly going on. How much is too much in, in the elite realms and the pro level stuff. Yeah. But with what you're doing, with the fly, yeah, it's nice to have. You can still see life, 
Yeah. But yeah. you're not as dependent on it as they were out there moving around chasing those bait balls and those fish out in open water. Exactly. And the, and the thing about it is, is like, you know, our electronics are a little older. We're not, I mean, we don't, we don't, we can do it, but it's, it takes right. a lot of work to get them to that level of getting it to where we can see our bait and dropping our baits on them and things like that. So it's like, that's where we stick to our strengths and right. pick, pick up something that you can work a bank with oh, in yeah. this, in this type of weather. And I mean, the, these temperatures that we're dealing with in the water, uh, in the water and stuff. So it's like, and you prove that it, you not only compete, but you can dominate. You can do yes. really, really well yes. by even without it. But definitely, they had a great showing. But what they they told me when I I talked to Justin today um, through Messenger was that they called a couple early, um, and then later on in the day they finally went back to where they had started, and because they couldn't really find any more active fish. And I will say that I, I think there were very small pockets of active fish on that lake saturday i i agree with that completely. and, and like you landed on a, a an active section me and dad pulled into a little section and caught both of our fish in like a 40 yard stretch and like it just seemed like those active stretches were very very small um the snyder boys caught a ton of fish in two little sections and then fished a lot of other dead water uh, i don't know about mike and evan how much dead water but i do know they did most of their damage probably fairly early they were already back on the trailer when we came back Oh, yes. um, but so those two boys, Justin and Hank, came back to their original starting spot and located some active fish again, throwing a blade bait. Um, and this is actually how me and dad did it down on Cherokee in the Tennessee team trail. One of us throwing a, a blade bait, the other one dropping right below the boat. And he said that when Hank hooked up on that silver buddy, was fighting that fish in, he dropped down while those other fish were firing up over all that commotion. And uh, he was able to to hook up with a second one and they put those two keepers in the boat to give them four but that was at the last minute so that's definitely one of those situations of um staying with it keeping your head down because those two fish right there took them from probably finishing outside of the top five outside of getting a little payback and put them all the way up to third so a good start for them on the year yeah. for sure so so overall kelsey what do you think all right compared to what we potentially could have been dealing with it was a good start to the year you think i think well i mean for me especially yeah <laughs> I, I thought it was a great start but uh I, I mean no i think i think we had a good good start to the year i i, I hate that the weather was the way it was because yeah i know there's there were some people that left early and stuff like that but i'm i mean i don't awesome blame i don't we, blame them one i don't bit. blame that them was, bit, no. that was brutal out there but i mean great to have a good turnout i mean what we had 20 boats out on the water yeah this weekend had 20 mean, definitely it's good to see that many especially for the conditions we were in it's good to see that many boats out on the water for our first tournament and yeah definitely like i said like i said it was it was brutal out there my hands were, were getting numb when you called me that one time i told you i was cheating a little bit with my heater buddy back <laughs> here me and dad pulled back in that pocket we busted yeah. that thing out and just sat around there waiting until we could actually fill our hands i tried to tie i tried to tie that king sling knot one time my left hand I couldn't pinch it tight enough to to get it to loop around and and what was bad was I had just caught mine I was retying just to be safe and I'm yeah. sitting there and I'm retying that king sling and my left hand won't pinch the the eye of the hook and the line together tight enough to keep it tight and all of a sudden he's like I get it looped and I'm starting to go around that fly and I pinch it with my my left hand and dad goes oh fish on I'm like well shoot i ain't gonna be able to <laughs> if i put this thing down i'm never gonna be able to retie it again so in the video exactly. you see me sitting there holding my flies i walk around the boat with the net trying to net his fish <laughs> and i'm like i ain't putting this thing down so yeah. i finally get it in there but man my hands were getting numb and, it was almost and, like that time at cherokee when me and you were oh, down yeah. there that was bad <laughs> oh, yeah. well and another thing just to go into that in the end of that topic one thing that dad and i both have is a pair of wool knitted gloves that have the yeah. fingers out of them. And the good thing about the wool gloves in the, in this cold weather and stuff, I mean, yeah, it, it stinks to wear gloves when you're fishing, but those gloves, no matter what they get wet, whatever your hands stay warm. So that's one thing. Make sure that you put that investment into good gear when you go out and fish, fish in these elements, because yeah. like a, a, what a year ago. Yeah. I think I was about a year Holston, ago. 
it was back around Thanksgiving. It was the weekend after Thanksgiving. Yeah, you and I went out to Holston, and it, it was what the high that day was forty five, and it rained all day, and my rain suit failed, and I ended up with pneumonia. So it's like, make sure to invest in good gear. So I about because, killed you then. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you you want to stay healthy out there and stay as warm as you possibly can. Yeah, and that's the so, only way you're going to make it make it enjoyable enough for you to to get through it, especially when 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 it's a wintertime bite, it's going to be slow anyhow. I mean, oh, yeah. you're still going to have those slow lull periods. It's not like you're going to be getting, catching fish and getting bites all day long. So being able to stay warm is a huge, huge piece of that. Um, well, Kelsey, it's been 30 minutes. That's what we were shooting for in these these shows. All right. So we're going to wrap this up, guys. I hope you all have enjoyed this. We're going to be doing one of these after each tournament. Um, luckily this time Kelsey had the win we got to talk to the actual winner of the event uh, but even if it's not one of us that, that wins the event we're going to be talking to the top three we'll get some information from them about how things went uh, and we'll just give you a little rundown of how our days went and talk about our feelings and thoughts on the tournament but um, I hope y'all enjoy this enjoy uh, the information that we share and and what you learn and if you have any feedback give us some feedback of different things you'd like for us to talk about or to ask the the top three whenever we do these shows and we'll we'll get that on here and uh maybe even do, try to do one of these live on youtube one time and get y'all's input on some comments and stuff but we'll we'll wait on that until we actually get all this stuff figured out ourselves right Gils? <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a learning curve for for the technologically impaired over here so we're getting there as you can see i'm gonna have to block out his name he's not michaela <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> dang on it <laughs> well it's but whatever anyways. well kelsey either way Congratulations on stomping all of us this Thank weekend. Y'all. y'all did awesome. And guys, we will see you all next time after we fish Cherokee. Uh, but again, we want to thank our title sponsor for this event, Todd Harkle Road Roofing. And again, all of our other partners as well, Watson's, BJ Custom Lures. Um, again, Todd Harkle Road Roofing, uh, Connect Scales, and then the other title sponsors that will come with the other the other events later on this season. We want to thank all those guys. And again, everybody that's been uh, joining up with the club, fishing with us this year, join the fellowship. It's just been really fun to see a lot of new faces as well. And we look forward to seeing all of you again at the next meeting, the next tournament, guys. So we'll check you all later. Uh-huh.